I'd like to give you yet another way of thinking about triads, again using our vocabulary of intervals, but thinking about it from a slightly different perspective this time. And let's start by building a triad on the note D. So just for convenience, I'll, I'll pick this D that's right above middle C. And we said that a triad is a third followed by another third. So let's, let's follow that through and figure that out. So if we start on D, the first thing that we need is a third above D. So we're going to go D1, E2, F3. And that gives us an F as a third above D. And then let's continue on. We need another third above the F, so we're going to go F1, G2, A3. So A is our second third. So we have a third followed by another third. D, F, A. And there is a perfectly correctly formed triad. But there's another way that we can conceive of this triad, again using intervals. Um, when we talk about a triad being a third followed by another third, we're starting at the bottom and we're working our way up to the top, note by note. But what if we measure the intervals in a triad starting from the bottom note? And let me rewrite our D triad here. So rather than going from D to F and then measuring from F up to A, we're going to measure both of our intervals from D. Let me show you what I mean. So if we start on D, if I measure from D to F, we know that D to F is a third. We have a third here. Then what if we measure from D all the way up to A, from the first note to the last note of this triad? Let's, let's, let's do that. Let me erase what I've got up here, and let's actually do that. So we're going to measure the interval from D to A. So we go D1, E2, F3, G4, A5, which means the D to the A is a fifth. So D to an F is a third, D to an A is a five. So in this tribe, we actually have a third from the bottom note to the and then a fifth to the bottom note. Let's see this in action in another triad. Um, let's build a triad on F. So we're going to start on F. And let's build it the way that we learned before by, by, by creating a third followed by another third. So if we start on F, we need a third above F. So let's start over here. We have F1, G2, A3. So our second note of the triad is going to be A. That gives us a third. Then we're going to need another third, A1, B2, C3. So our next note is C, which is a third above A. So I'm going to rewrite the, the F triad over here. And let's, again, calculate the distance from the bottom note. So our bottom note is F. Let me erase what I've got up here, just so we can use this again. So F is our bottom note. If we go from F, if we measure the distance from F to our middle note, which is A, F, 1, G, 2, A, 3. We get a third. And then if we measure the distance from the F to the C, we get F1, G2, A3, B4, C5. So again, we have an instance where we have a third from the bottom note followed by a fifth from the bottom note. And it turns out that's another way that we can conceive of a triad as a chord that is built with the interval of a third from the bottom note followed by an interval of, the, of a fifth from the bottom note. And let's actually see if we can use that. 
uh, to create a triad from scratch. Let's create a triad on A. So here's what we need. We need a third from that bottom note A, followed by a fifth from that bottom note A. So let's go back up here and use our letter names and see if we can construct this. Okay, so we start on A, and the first thing we need is a third above A. So we're going to go A1, B2, C3. So our third above A is a C. Now we need a fifth above A. So let's figure out what a fifth above A is. We have A1, B2, C3, D4, E5. So a fifth above A is going to be E. And guess what? That gives us a perfectly good triad. A, C, and E. And notice, no matter which way we conceive of the triad, whether it's that, that play, skip, play, skip, play, whether it's as a third followed by another third, or whether it's counting from the bottom note, the third from the bottom note and the fifth from the bottom note, all three of those varieties will, will, will get us exactly the same answer. In the next video, we're going to start to look at what happens when we start mixing the notes of a triad up, and that's going to add some interesting complications.